Let's try it again. So then we play. <laughs> so eventually we get into using the full scale, and it might be something like this. So it's starting to look at it and loosen up a little bit with these pitches. Um, this can extend for however long our clinic is. Sometimes uh, people are booking us for a couple hours. If we do that, we have more time to target different sections, do call and response within the ensemble. We love the whole singing, playing thing, so we'll divide the, the uh, sections into teams. So we've got the singers versus the players, and they, uh, you know, the players have to play a series of notes, and then the singers have to sing them back. We might uh, call one person to be a soloist, and he'll be the leader, and the rest of the people will follow. But after a while, they're really loosened up, and they say, okay, now we have an idea of the sound of this. Um, but at some point, we really have to get into the improvisation of things. Let's move ahead a little bit. So notice before, we looked at the uh, pentatonic in terms of the lower fragment and the upper fragment. So we had C, B flat, F, that was on the other slide, and then G, B flat, C. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that upper fragment and put it on the bottom. So that's going to be... top half is still that nice melody. If we take those bottom notes, the G, B flat, and the C, and we just isolate B flat to C, that's a really, really nice melodic example of a tail. And this is an example of really a melodic uh, tail, which is four, uh, five measures. Uh, you want to try playing this? Sure. Okay. The bottom one. Now let's do the all five minutes, starting on the top. One, two, three, four.
teaching in the Jazz Academy, you know, he's, he's already, you know, Matthew was already including in his solo all of these call and response elements where you're hearing a fragment, then you're hearing the same rhythm repeated but different notes. If a kid can't do that to start with, we'll do some call and response with an individual. Or I might take the horn, and maybe we should just try this for a second. Um, <coughs> Because if the student isn't ready, if he's feeling intimidated by just four notes, then that's okay. I mean, he can take a couple hours and just hang out with those first four and make a lot of melody. That almost never happens. They get the hang of it so quick. Um... Okay, so let's say I play, I would say, think in time here. One, two, okay. Now what I'm going to do is play a fragment, and then you don't have to play back what I'm playing. This is important because we want success here. So if the kid can't match it, it's immediate failure to the kid. So it's very important that there's something immediately that says, right, I can do this. And this means it's going to be a rhythmic exercise, but the notes are going to be those four pitches. So you can play whatever you want, but you're going to try to hear the rhythm I play. So focus on the rhythm. Okay. Uh, one, two, and two, and two, go. before you introduce a blues progression of any kind, which is just a whole can of worms. We're going to get to that, by the way, but that's really kind of a, a level two here. Um, now, if we include the last four notes, the soloist immediately has a lot more options because of that tail, because of the, the tonic going to flat seven. In this case, of course, it's the concert C going to be five. Let's uh, try a little bit. You now can use any of those eight notes. One, two, here I go. Yeah, so, you know, this is kind of an obviously fabricated situation because it's, we've got a professional doing the, handling the response. Uh, but, you know, I, I left my Australian 12-year-old kid taking the course back in Australia. It's impossible to make that happen.